What's up, everybody? I'm Michael Allen, and this is The Movie Minute. This episode on The Movie Minute, we're talking about Agatha Christie's third installment in her trilogy of movies, A Haunting in Venice. So, this is preceded by Murder on the Orient Express and then Death on the Nile, and this is the third film in that trilogy. The film is based on Agatha Christie's book Halloween Party, I believe, and so, yeah, I mean, let's jump into it. All right, so let's talk about A Haunting in Venice. It's directed by Kenneth Branagh, who also stars in the film as Perot, the detective, the famous detective who kind of stars in all of Agatha Christie's books, you know, her detective mystery novels. I went into this one with really kind of middling expectations because Murder on the Orient Express was fun, but cheesy. I mean, it just wasn't great. It was good, but not great. Death on the Nile was terrible. So that really like tanked my expectations for a while of this film when I first saw the trailer. Just was not having great expectations. But as it got closer, I was like, you know, it looks fairly interesting. It was kind of a different take on the on the character and that world. And so I got pretty interested as I got closer to the film. So the premise of the film is basically Perot has kind of like retired. He's kind of a grumpy old man, just like they do every male actor right now. It's like Indiana Jones, like all these guys, like they're just these grumpy old men that aren't happy with life, which is kind of sad, but teach their own. Um, so he is retired in Venice. He's living his life. People are still trying to kind of get him to take cases, but he's fully checked out from that whole world. And then Tina Fey shows up as an old friend who wants to kind of, get him to debunk a medium who like tell, who speaks to the dead, who's played by Michelle Yeoh. And she kind of tricks him a little bit into coming to this party and kind of debunking whether this woman is a real medium or not. And that's kind of the basis of the film. And I don't want to say much more because I don't want to spoil it for you. I liked a lot about A Haunting in Venice. I mean, I don't even know where to start. I'll, like the overall... The beginning of the film is a little slow, but it's a slow that I like. I mean, it's a very methodically paced film. Like you can tell that the director and the editor, they talked and they really ramped it up in a really good way. Like the tension ramps so smoothly that I really liked it. And Venice is beautiful. The, I mean, the cinematography in the beginning of this film is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just the shots of Venice and the palazzos and the bridges and the water and the boats, all of that's there and it's just beautiful. The plot is really well written and well done. The writing in general is really strong. There are still some cheesiness to it, but it's it didn't really bother me in this one because it was not as bad as it's been in the past. Death on the Nile was so bad in that regard. And so they totally made some adjustments there and did a much better job, job at the dialogue here. There are some really captivating scenes. And that just leads me into talking about the performances. Holy smokes. I mean, Brano's great. I love him as this character, Perot. He just knows the character well. And you feel like you feel like you're watching Perot. You don't feel like you're watching Brana. And that's the best actors, you know, that's the best characters is you feel like he is that guy and you don't really think about him as anybody else. And so the amazing performance. Tina Fey was okay. Like, I mean, she wasn't bad. I just, I always see her as Lemon, you know, from 30 Rock. And so it's hard for me to break that out of my head. Um, but Michelle Yeoh plays the medium. Oh my gosh, this woman is just incredible. Incredible. The scenes between her and Brana and the seance scene that there is in the movie, I mean, holy smokes. Like, I don't know if she hits the screen time uh, uh, requirement that she needs to be nominated for supporting actress for this, but man, I mean, she could win it if she had the screen time. I mean, it was that good, that captivating. And I mean, I loved it. I, I was dialed in with her the whole time really loved, loved, loved the setting. The production design is incredible. The place where they shot, I didn't even check. I should check if they shot in Venice because the place where they shot was gorgeous. The production designer and the art director, they did an amazing job at making this feel like post-World War II Italy, like post-World War II Venice. Very, very well done. The thing that they honestly did best about this movie is the ebb and flow of the story 
and the rise and fall of the tension. And that's pacing. I mean, that's totally pacing. And it's like energy, like that way that the script progresses is really well done. Really, there was only two things that I didn't like. And the first thing that I didn't like is the whole cast as a whole, there's a lot of B characters. I mean, everybody plays a key role in this story. All of the characters do. And a lot of those kind of outside B characters, their arcs were not fully realized. Like they, they we didn't get to see complete kind of A, B, C arcs of the characters. And I think you could have done that with a little bit of extra lines, a little bit of extra development on the script. I think you could have realized that for all of these kind of outside characters. And part of that as well was that like, it, it was a little bit confusing. There were some script aspects on those characters that were a little bit confusing because I couldn't necessarily hear them all the time speaking. There's a lot of mumbling in this and you can hear most of it, but there are times where I feel like I missed something and I'm like, did I miss something that told me about this character because I never found out what happened with them. Um, and so that was one of the things that just bothered me. This not fully complete character design across the whole cast, which is hard to do, but it just, yeah. Main characters were great. Side characters, a little bit weak. And then, I mean, the second one really is like the cheap scares. Now, in horror film, there is a way to scare people. There's a formula that, and there's, you can break that formula sometimes, but I mean, there is a way of saying, okay, I'm gonna lead up to something and then people think they're gonna get scared and I don't scare them. And then you do it again and you don't scare them. And then you get the right time. You pick the right times to boom, scare people. And you earn your screams. You earn your scares. I I felt like in this film, they didn't really earn their scares a lot of the time. There were some good scares, but there was a lot of cheap scares, like screeching animals, crashing stuff, things just coming out of nowhere, like really loud in the theater, just making you jump because it's so loud. And those are cheap. They're not earned. They just like... They're just done to kind of make you jump in the theater, and I don't like those type of scares. Really, this film is a thriller. It's not a horror film, and so there are horror elements, and I mean, it's not a family film. I mean, the film is scary. It's, there's a lot of scary elements, talking to the dead. The seance scene is terrifying and really well done, and so I would not take family or kids to this. It's absolutely a teenage and up film. It's PG-13, which is I mean, I think that there's some stuff that is even maybe a little bit scary for 13 year olds, but it depends on what 13 year old. This is an easy popcorn bucket. If you are a mystery fan, if you're a thriller fan, a horror fan, you're gonna enjoy this movie. It's really, really engaging. It's absolutely a great theater experience. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Would love to have you on this journey with me. Drop in the comments, maybe your favorite Agatha Christie novel or your favorite mystery novel in general. And until next time, Peace out.